Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch. We got a quick and dirty video to showcase some uh, functionality in Godot 4. This is Volumetric Clouds, and it's a pretty cool example. So, again, pretty simple video. We're going to jump in, take a look, hands on. And what we're looking at here is Godot 4 development version. There is, I guess we could call this a pre beta version available for download. And that is what I'm using to run this example. This example is available up on GitHub. I'll show you some more details about that in just a second. But here you can see it in action. And what we have is Volumetric Clouds, they're part of our Skybox. As you can see there in the background, uh, being generated basically infinitely off in the horizon. Now, these are not clouds that you can uh, go and fly in and through. This is more of for a, a skybox background type setup. But let's go ahead and run this example. You can see them in action. So these are actually animated. So if we look at this really closely, you'll be able to see uh, the clouds are actually moving. So you see up here, a little bit of movement going on there. Now, one thing to note, I don't think you have control over the speed, but you do have control over quite a few of the settings with these clouds, including how they are generated, the cloud maps that are used to make them. And on top of that, you've also got this here, this directional 3D light represents the sun in our scene. And what I could do is actually rotate this guy. You're going to notice there's a, a little Nimbus right there, which by the way, we could also set up. That represents our sun. So I can do is go ahead and just rotate this guy in one direction and have it go up, or I can have it go below the horizon, like so, and our cloud system will respond to the various different times of day uh, as our sun goes through the sky. So you can do day-night cycles using this cloud system, no problems at all. It's very cool in that regard. Go roughly back to where we started. Now, if you want to check this guy out, it is implemented as a shader. Uh, it's available under World Environment, and they come on into Environment, and then go make sure that mode is set to sky for background. Go to your sky, check the sky right here, and then you are going to notice, let me just expand this out a little bit. There is a shader material applied. We will select the shader material, and then you'll see clouds.gdshader is in fact the shader we are working with. We'll go ahead and take a look at that in just a second. I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail on it, but what you'll notice is there are a number of shader parameters we can set right there. So what you can do is change, let me just rotate my camera slightly so that you can actually see our sky a little bit better. All right, there we go. So there is our sky in action. And now let me go back to the world environment here. Uh, we can change the, the density of our clouds like so. By the way, all these could potentially be controlled um, programmatically if you wished. The coverage, so the amount of cl clouds in the sky, no clouds, big time clouds. So you could also animate in this regard if you wish as well. Uh, we got controlled over various different uh, settings. So Radley, which I believe is the sky color itself, but I am not uh, um, I am not a very cloud knowledgeable person, but you see here, you can change the color of it. Deep blue sky, lighter blue, and we can kind of control it going that way. Uh, my, I don't even know how to say that, so I don't actually know exactly what that represents in terms of cloud parameters. It seems to be the nimbus around the sun itself. Um, eccentricity of it, again, controllable this way. You've got um, turbidity. Again, no idea what turbidity actually means. Let's see if we can actually tell vis visibly. Nope, no clue. Uh, the sun disk, we saw that earlier on. We can change the size of it so you can see it scaling out right there. So you got control over it like so. Uh, control of the ground color. You can change the exposure of the scene itself. And then you've got a trio of textures that are used here. And you can see any one of these. These are all provided. There's the world and noise uh, texture right there, a pearl and noise, world noise texture, and then a weather map texture as well. So if you want to change, like those are the, the generative characters that went together to create the volumetric sky that we see in action here. It's really kind of a cool shader. There's not actually a ton of code required behind this. So this is uh, the uh, the actual implementation. So you got those couple of... Uh, uh, bitmap uh, and target files to be used as textures, these three textures here. And of course, you've got the directional light in play, but the majority of the logic is implemented here in this uh, GD shader, uh, using obviously the uh, Godot shader language. You can see the logic in action here. Uh, again, I don't know much about clouds, as you can tell by not knowing even what the parameters are all about. So I'm not even going to try and figure out. Uh, I do recognize certain words, such as beer, and beers too, <laughs> and total beers. I have no idea how to calculate uh, real-time skies, et cetera, but I, I can show you uh, where some of this information came from. But this is the shader code that went together to create the demo we just saw, and uh, the end results are pretty cool, uh, I would have to say. That's about it. So if you wanted to implement volumetric skies in uh, the... Uh, 
Godot 4 game engine. Uh, this is a very simple way of doing it. You can obviously expand it, the functionality you wish, on the shader on top right here. And that's kind of the extent of it. Now, uh, if you want to grab this guy yourself, straightforward. Uh, it is Clay John who created this one, and it's the Godot Volumetric Cloud Demo. You can see it in action. It is under the MIT license, so if you want to go ahead and use this in your own project, you can do so. Uh, very few requirements in that regard. You don't have to release your changes or anything like that. Um, you can see that how the various different uh, skies are, uh, have been calculated. Uh, demo implements one way of drawing volumetric cloudscapes in the Godot sky shader. Uh, this demo uses animated clouds generated from Raymarch 3D textures, features automatic time of day adjustments by rotating the sun, as we saw in action, uh, rendered using the Vulkan renderer. If you want to check out his repository, uh, he's done some uh, research on real-time clouds. And you can see uh, the algorithm sources that he's gone from here uh, you can get some of the, the sources right here. So there's a shader toy example out there. Uh, there's an article on uh, Horizon Zero Dawn's uh, way they did clouds and so on. So I think that was the inspiration behind his ultimate uh, work here. Now that was from quite some time ago, but here again is the ultimate uh, project that we were looking at today. Uh, if you want to check it out, basically just grab uh, Godot 4 and um, just clone this repository down somewhere, open it up in Godot and you're good to go. And uh, once again, drill down, all of the implementation is in the environment settings. Uh, sky is turned on, go into the sky settings. It's a shader material and it is cloud clouds.gdshader. And that's one way of implementing uh, volumetric clouds inside of the Godot game engine. I do keep in mind, again, this is background only. So if you're trying to do something like a flight simulator where you actually have to fly through the clouds, you're going to want a different implementation. But if you just need um, realistic skies for your game off in the horizon, uh, definitely worth checking out. So that's it. Quick and dirty video for a quick and dirty day. I hope you're having a good Friday. See you on the weekend. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.